Hello and welcome back to the NathanDumont.com video blog. I've been making some modifications to my RepRap to improve some of the things that I mentioned in the How Not to Build a RepRap video. Um, so I'm going to go through those. There's basically three things I've changed that I'm going to go through today. I've changed the Z-axis couplings and the threaded rod. I've changed the belt uh, pulleys for aluminium ones and I've built a proper enclosed power supply for it, all of which have helped with reliability and ease of use. So let's go through each one of those. So one of the most drastic changes I've made is the uh, Z-axis coupling here, which I've replaced the actual coupling with one of these uh, aluminium shaft couplings. This spiral section is flexible so that the, the motor alignment doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that's replaced the original plastic um, not peed style connectors which were on there. Um, I was getting different problems with the z-axis not moving reliably and missing steps and things um, which was to do with alignment. I've also replaced the actual threaded rod here with uh, some stainless which is much um, much harder material and so the manufacturing process is necessarily more strict rather than this uh, original galvanized um, zinc steel rod it's uh, it's been cut thread cut much more precisely which should give a, a smoother movement through the nuts on the um, X carriage. You see, rather than using the uh, there's a, a five millimeter to eight millimeter variety of these couplings available on eBay, rather than use that, I've used the uh, five millimeter to five millimeter, and got the top end of the rod turned down to five millimeter so that it's a good firm grip that's exactly central to the shaft. Uh, Dad did that on his lathe, but I have seen a lot of people who've just bolted the M8 rod straight into the uh, 8mm end of a 5 to 8mm shaft coupling. So the other big change I've made to the mechanics of the rep wrap is the uh, pulleys. I've done this on both the X and Y axis, but the X axis is easier to see here. So I've replaced the original plastic pulleys, which I showed in the last video were actually becoming slightly oval um, because of the stresses um, and, the, and the heat. I've replaced them with these aluminium uh, and steel pulleys. So the, the pulleys themselves are straight off um, Farnell or radio spares um, and they've got, they come with a different size bore to them uh, four millimeter, I think. So these have had to be drilled out to the right size. Again, that was I got Dad to do that on the lathe. Um, so they're spot on concentric. Um, and then the I've got two grub screws on each uh, each of the pulleys uh, set out by 90 degrees, so that it grips on. One of them is onto the flat, and one of them is onto the side of the shaft to give maximum grip and make sure there's no slipping on the on the motor shaft because that was my biggest cause of uh, um, backlash it wasn't actually the belt tension it was just the pulley slipping on the um, on the motor it can't do that now so it's a good good strong fit and that's uh, certainly improved the reliability when it's doing lots of backwards and forwards um, sudden direction changes. The final thing I wanted to show in this video was the new power supply. Um, PC power supplies are all very well but they're a bit of a nuisance to keep unplugging and plugging in and the RepRap doesn't have any kind of mounting solution for putting a power supply in the base or anything. Um, so I've taken the design Adrian Bowyer did for a, an XLR connector which bolts onto one of the back uh, legs of the frame. I've used a 4-pin XLR rather than 3 to avoid 
confusion with any kind of microphone leads or anything that can't handle high current. Uh, overdone the cabling a bit here perhaps, but um, easier to use heavier gauge than figure out what the absolute limit is. So the power supply has got two rows of uh, seven segment displays here which can display the um, the current consumed uh, in each of two circuits. So there's uh, two complete circuits here. Um, one is the heated bed and one is all the rest of the electronics so you can see how much current is being consumed by each system. Power switch there and a 10 amp breaker on the heated bed so if it draws more than 10 amps then this will trip out and stop it. At the, the back of the chassis we've got uh, a strain relief grommet on the um, on the cable to the wrap wrap and a, a standard uh, fused inlet socket here. So there's a, a 5 amp fuse in there so it doesn't matter what what rating the cable you plug in you'll find quite often find they've got a 13 amp fuse or something in them which is far more than this can safely consume so I've got a small fuse in there which will blow. Um, of course you wouldn't have that if it was a European style plug or American because there's no fuses in the plugs. Um, the actual power supply unit is the one recommended on the RepRap wiki off eBay um, and I've just put all this stuff around it to kind of insulate it a bit and, and make sure that if someone trips over the power lead it won't pull out it won't pull out of the the screw terminals or anything it'll just disconnect it safely um, you can see the con back of the control board in there it's a simple pick circuit um, an old pick I had lying around not much memory or power to it and a couple of uh, 0.05 ohm power sense resistors in the box. Okay, so that's the three changes. I've seen these done on, on several other rep wraps, very similar modifications. The, uh, the shaft couplings are, are quite popular, um, and I've I've seen this variance on this uh, pulley mod done various places as well. Um, all in all, it seems to improve the reliability uh, to test out the new pulleys. I did, gave it the Dave Jones test, so we uh, printed a Space Invader, came out nice and clean all round, um, no slipping or anything on mine, so looks like it's pretty reliable. I have to try some more printing now. Thanks for watching.